Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer, and today we're going to tie a little bit smaller pike fly, and that is tied on a hook, and it's gonna have an extension for a wiggle tail, so you could fish it uh, with a wiggle tail, or you can just snap the tail off in a very simple way like this. This is a great pattern for um, pike, uh, perch, big perch, and also sander. Um, it's a pattern we've been fishing for um, quite many years, uh, but recently just got an updated head with some, um, some laser dub instead of the, just a normal um, epoxy head of it like this. But it's a great pattern. It's a very simple pattern to tie. It's great if you're a beginner. Uh, it's also great if the water is cold, so you need to downsize a little bit. And it's just a really good pattern, and you can also catch really big uh, sea run brown trout on it too. So let's go. First of all, we're using a Partridge uh, Universal Predator X. This is the uh, 6 -0. It's a slightly bigger hook than I usually use because I, I'm only going to run one hook. Otherwise, you can um, use a little bit smaller. It's all depending on what kind of gear you got, if you have a, an 8 weight or a 9 weight. But I like to use the X uh, wire. It's a little bit heavier wire, so it will sink a little bit faster. So, 6 -0. In the vise like that, nice and secure. I get a lot of questions what kind of vise I'm using and this is the Marc Petitjean. Um, it's the master vise and it's, it's very very versatile, you can put it wherever you want to. So it's a very very nice vise. Um, so we're putting some super glue here on the hook. And we're putting that on because we were using a, a, a thread that has no stretch and it has no wax on it. So you, when you put the glue on the hook, it really gets a good solid base to it. We cut the existing material off. This is a hundred denier thread, so it's fairly strong, so you can pull the material really hard. So we go with the thread all the way back to the, to the barb. We'll take some titanium wire. This is the Bauer pike wire. Um, this is 55, 60 pounds straight single titanium. We just take a piece that is roughly 20 centimeters. And this is going to be the, uh, the extension for the wiggle tail. For you guys who doesn't know what titanium is, it's, it's a single strand material that actually has some stretch. So if you put two silver rings in this, you could actually stretch the material and it goes back. But it also, it doesn't have any memory. So whatever you do with this, like this, it's gonna come out straight again, or almost straight at least. And it's, it's really good for, for um, you know, if you're having, making a, like a Bauer pike rig, so you have a trailer hook, or it's, it's really a super material if you want to have something straight back. So we use that, 20 centimeters. We're just going to use a simple bead here. These are uh, beads for coarse fishing. So they are, um, they, they are kind of UV in them. We're going to use a fast attachment clip. This is the size zero. Um, I put this in the back here because then you can really simple change the wiggle tails in different sizes and different colors. So you put this snap on first here, like this, and then you make them double, and then you put the bead on here. So then you pull the bead like that. So then you have the fast attachment clip with the snap here, and then you have the bead. And we're not going to put any tension to this at all, it's just going to hold the wheel tail. It doesn't going to have a hook or anything like that, so you don't have to go through the eye and stuff like that, like you do in, if you do making a Bauer Pike rig or something like that. So you only need to have this straight on the hook like this. So we just tie it all the way forward, trying to keep the uh, wire on top nice and even. And then we go back again. We're going to put a lot of material over here, so you don't have to make really a lot of thread wraps here. Just go over it back and forward and put some super glue on it, and then we're good to go. Super glue is really the good thing when you're tying pike flies because you get really durable flies. So now we have the extension for the wiggle tail here. As you can see, you have this snap in the back, and now we're going to make the bucktail. It's going to be the same length or just a slightly longer than the extension for the tail here. 
And why you're doing that is you want to kind of hide the extension, but you don't want to have too much material touching the tail because then you're not going to get the right action of the tail. So you need to have it, you know, the, the fly should stop fairly around where the tail starts. You know. So we're going to go a mixture of four different colors of bucktail. And these are all fluorescent colors. Actually, not this one, uh, but it's fluorescent white, fluorescent chartreuse, and fluorescent blue. We're not going to use so much of it uh, because we're going to use all four colors, but we're going to use them in the tail and we're also going to use them in the front. So what I do is I mix the, the colors for the whole fly right away so we don't have to mix them twice. So we take some, this, we have a Swedish word for this, it's called lagom. You have to learn that in English because it's a great word, just the right amount. So we take some fluorescent chartreuse here. We take some blue. Oop. Take some of the short fibers off. Uh, take a little bit bigger bunch of white. And this is fluorescent white. Take all the short fibers off. If you have seen the videos before, you can do it in different ways. You can hit the, fly, hit the fibers like this, or you can just pull it off in a simple way. Put that there. Take all the fibers on the same place. And we take some pink here too. Pink is actually a really good color when you mix these color combinations together because it makes that shimmer in the bait fish that they sometimes have and looks really natural. This is also a great color combination these four when you're doing um, flat wing flies for sea rum brow trance and stuff like that. So we have these colors together here so now we're gonna try to mix them together as good as possible so we kind of roll them like this uh, together trying to mix them a little bit and then after you do that you need to have a comb just a simple comb like this, nothing fancy, and then you just start to comb this. You hold the tips like this, and then you just go through this some as you kind of twist them between your fingers like this. You go again, you roll it a little bit more again, and then you hold it by the tips. And then we kind of mix it again, you know, so we get a nice and even mix here. It's a little bit time consuming, but the result is usually really, really nice. And if you make a whole, if you make a big bunch, you can use it for like two flies. This is a little bit too much for one fly, but. So now we have a fairly nice mixture here. We have four different colors. Now you can see that the, the, the tips are good. They are nice and tapered. But here we have kind of a mess and we want to have them very straight so it's simple more simple to tie in so what we do is you hold this bunch here and you kind of stack them on the table like this you hold it very loose so all the fibers have the chance to go down to the table you know, when you knock it on the table like this like that and then you have a, a fairly nice and straight bunch here so we take A part of this bunch here. Don't to put too much material on your flies. I mean, less is usually more. Uh, the more material you put on the flies, the heavier they become, and they won't swim as well either. So, a little bit less is usually a very good way. A lot of people that I meet <coughs> on courses and demos and stuff like that, they always go like, "Oh shit, you're not having so much materials in your fly." So, keep it a little bit more less. You're gonna be happy. So we take this bunch. It's uh, around. 12 centimeters and it's just a slightly longer than the fast attachment clip here. We take it and we're going to tie it straight back, not forward and reverse it like we normally do. So take it over the hook, try to get the material around the hook, make one, two, three turns and then pull with a straight bobbin, not with a folded one like that, with a straight one. Then you just go through this bunch here, like 20 times or something like that 
and you're going to have a very straight and strong position. So now we have the tail is ready. It's a nice mixture and it's really there. If you tie this forward and reverse it, you're going to have a very big hole here in the back and it's not going to make, make that nice and even uh, tail here. So we just go in and cut these pieces off here as tight as possible. It's usually very good to have a sharp scissor when you're a fly tire because otherwise fly tying is can be very very hard. So there's the tail. It's just slightly longer than the extension for the tail. And then we're going to put some flash in here. And I like to put uh, three different colors in here and two different types. We're putting this lateral scale here. As you can see, that's a little bit crinkled. It's really good as a sideline or a lateral scale for, um, for the fish and also or for the fly actually. It looks like a fish when it just swims off like that. And then we're going to put some magnum, um, opal, and just straight silver. So it's not going to be a lot of flash. It's just going to be a little bit. So we start with the uh, lateral scale. Just going to find two here. That's nice. Nice and straight. The ends are a little bit fucked up here, so we'll just cut them off. So we have two strands of this, and you always want to fold flash when you tie it in. So we're going to kind of keep this as a side light here. So we put it the same length as the tail. You tie it there, have half of the material forward and half back and we just fold that over. And you can just cut it if it's, you don't want to have them exactly even but you don't want to have one very long and very short either. So this is going to be on this side and now we're going to do the same on the other side. Flat, flat and straight at, along the hook here. Make a few turns and fold it over and secure it. And now we have those as lateral scales or side lines on the fish. And then we're going to put some opal flash. This is magnum flash from Hedron. And this is just a normal straight silver. We take three strands. This is the full length, put them on the table and then we're going to have three opal ones here. This is the same magnum size, but this opal is really a cool color. It really mixes up in this type of bait fish well. So we put them on the table, mix them together a little bit like that, fold them together like that and cut them off. And put those two on the table and we're going to use these six strands here. Taper the ends a little bit so they're not just a straight fly. Twist them between your fingers a little bit so you get a nice spread. And put them on the top of the fly. Hold them with your left hand. Make thread wrap. Secure them with a few more. Make them even spread over the tail and then we fold them over and put some pressure with your thumb like that. They're going to make a nice and even spread like that. Make a few turns. So now they are nice and evenly tapered over the top of the fly and we're just going to do the exactly the same thing on the bottom of the fly. So twist them a little bit, make sure they're tapered and tie them in just like we did on top of the fly. Put them over like that, hold them with your thumb, make a few turns and then fold the material backwards. Try to get them nice into the tail. If they want to cooperate, like that. So now we have this tail, it's complete now, it has the sides and it has a nice spread of two different colors are flashable. So then we go back with the thread here so we really secure everything like that. We have good volume. It looks pretty good. Take one of these hair clamps. This is the Babyliss baby hair clamps just to get everything out of the way. Take some super glue 
and secure everything we have done there. So it's a nice and an even space here. So the tail is done and now we are going to continue with the body. And uh, the body on these flies are simply really simple. We're just going to wrap the whole body of long hair holographic chenille. This one is actually not holographic, this is just a, s a normal pearl. But it's, um, if we can find the end here, there it is. It's just um, a very long chenille with kind of a flashy material on it, and it's super simple to use. So we're going to use around, around 30 centimeters, cut it off like that. We go for the tip here, we tie it in, tie it all the way to the back of the fly, and go forward with the thread so it's kind of a centimeter from the, um, from the hook eye. And then you're just gonna wrap this around the body like this. And nice and tight, even wraps, so you don't have any gaps. And try to work with your right hand here, or with your left hand, and fold the material backwards the whole time. This is the material I've been using now for a few years, and it's, it's really, really good for pike and big streamers, um, because it's strong, it's fairly cheap, and it's really durable, and it has some really great color combinations they are made for us um, that you're gonna see in the other patterns, like the bream patterns and stuff like that. We're gonna use really cool copper colors and stuff like that, so. So, that's around two centimeters, and we have a good centimeter here left. So we tie that off, uh, make, a few, make a few turns. These you don't have to throw away because you're definitely going to tie more flies and you're going to use it for a head or something like that. So just keep it on the side. Note to myself, you can actually use 20 centimeters for this fly, not 30. <laughs> so um, we tie it off. We have a nice body. Once again, put some glue on there to secure everything and make it really durable. So now we're going to make kind of the wing, but it's, the wing is going to be all around the hook, so it gets a nice and big volume of the fly. So we're going to go for this bucktail again. We're going to use almost the same amount again, just slightly more than we did for the tail, like this. Uh, make sure that the back parts here are nice and even. So now we have this nice bucktail bunch here. It's a mixture of four colors and the tips are nice and tapered and it's fairly straight here. I usually go and take a scissor and cut it just a little bit extra here just to get the really straight and nice even bunch here. So we tie this bunch here or we take this bunch actually, not tie it, and we tie it forward, like really hollow tie. So spread it all around the hook like that, make a few turns, and then pull the thread towards you. And this is why we really need a strong thread, because otherwise you're going to break the thread here. And then you go through this here, Put the tension to the thread with a straight bobbin like that, and you won't break the thread easy, that easily either. So there we go. We check it out so we have a nice and even spread around it, so we don't have any gaps of missing here. Oh, that flash of doesn't want to be there. Take this one here. The most simple thing to do here is to take this clamp again, and you take your scissor and you cut all the material we're not going to use here, off. Because this, materials, this material here is only going to keep the volume of the fly and also it's going to not look as nice. So put some time to, to cut it off. So now we got, got everything tied forward. We just take a, a tube. This is from a pen, but it's really simple. And you go in, kind of divide the hair and then you just make a simple pull like that. You get all the materials at the same time with you. Simple. 
So what's important now is we're going to make like a small slope here to support the color of the bucktail. So what you do is you don't go like this with your thread. You go first straight to the right and then you go in front of it because otherwise you're going to take a few fibers with you when you go forward. Just a small trick but it makes a big difference. So now we make kind of a slope here. Just back and forward a little bit. Whoops, not over the material like I did there. This is just to get the right support for the fibers like that. So now we have a nice profile and also we got the volume but they're also lying in a very nice angle in my opinion. So we take the uh, clamp here again, put the material over there, we put some glue here only on the thread, not on the bucktail because then you can have a problem when you take this little clamp off here, it's going to look exactly like it's doing now and that's not so fun. So. We're going to continue with the same amount and same type of lash as we did in the tail. So two lateral scales in silver. Those two. And then we're going to go for the magnum again here. We're going to use three full lengths of silver. Like that. And then we're going to go for the opal. And we're going to use three of these again. And do exactly like we did the first time, put them together, fold them up, half length. You don't have to actually have to put them together, you can just taper the tip right away. Put them on the table, you know they're good. Take the second bunch, taper the tip, so you have a nice and tapered fly, and put them on the table. So we go for the lateral scale, make sure that the glue is a little bit dry and we put them once again as lateral scales or side lights on the fish. So tie them in half, halfway, so halfway is back, 50% is back, 50% in the forward, tie it in, fold it back and do the exactly the same way on the other side. Fold it like that and we're supposed to have them nice and evenly on the sides like that. And when you pull the fly it really makes that little extra touch to it. And then we take the other bunch that we already prepare, prepared here. We tie it in on top of it. 50% tie it in 50-50 like that. And we fold it over. And then we do exactly the same thing on the other side. Just repeating what we did on the tail. So there we go. And now we have a nice even spread of the flashable all around it. And here you can be kind of done if you want to. You can just put some epoxy here, two eyes, and you have this fly looking like this. But on this fly I want to have a little bit more bulky profile, a little bit more narrow profile so it really goes sideways in the water and also it makes a little bit more appearance in the water. So we're just going to make a very simple but super effective head of a laser dub. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, when you're doing this you want to have a fairly nice and tapered thread wraps underneath here because if you're if it's too steep it's going to have the material just for, fall forward the whole time so make it as nice and even as possible under here it's much more simple for you to work with it so we just put some glue here to secure the work have a little bit more durability in it just take some of the existing glue off and this is uh, laser dub from hairline and we're going to make this head kind of a two-tone you know a little slightly lighter on the on the belly and slightly darker on the top of it and um, I want to use pink and and some white here just to have that belly kind of feeling to it and I'm putting some chartreuse and just top it off with some olive here on the top 
just to make it a nice and even head. So we start with some of the, the colors we're going to use first. And that's going to be pink. We just pull some of these fibers off here. And then we tie it, put the thread all the way to the back here. Tie it on the, other, on the underside of the fly. We'll make a few turns, fold that over, and just tie it in in front of it. We'll take some of the green. This is green chartreuse, it's called the color. Like that. Do the same thing, but on the top. This is how you build up the head, kind of it to a nice and narrow profile. Just fold it over like that. And now we repeat this a few times here, just to build it up. Do some green again on the top here. Fold it over like that. Go for some pink again and go on the belly of the fly here. Fold it over. So now we kind of got the, you want to have it a little bit even, so put some more green on here. Top of it. Then we fold that over. So now we got the top and we got the bottom here. And it's gonna make like a very nice and high profiled head. So we can clamp that together again. And I, I like to put some, some white on the sides. So do exactly the same again. Put some white here, but put it on the side this time. Fold it over, make it one turn. And then we do the same thing on the other side. This is how, how you kind of hide all the thread wraps that still are visible like that. So now we're getting kind of cheeks on that. So we're just going to top off with some, some nice olive here as a head or as a back of the fly actually, like this. One, a few turns like that, fold it over, and then just tie it in very sparsely. And do we do the same with the white here on, on the belly. Not too much, like that, and just kind of hide the pink a little bit here. A few turns, fold it over, and we're just going to secure that with a few turns like that and kind of the head is done like that. We're gonna use a <coughs> dubbing brush to comb this together so you get the material to blend really nice but that's basically the head is done like that. So we just make a whip finish here. If you use a tool or if you use your fingers that's up to you guys. Um, I usually put some, th some glue on the thread after I've done the the knot, like that, and then just make a few turns, and then you're going to have a very, very strong head. And just put that thread, existing thread up in the glue. So basically, now we, what we need to do now is to take um, a dubbing brush, and we need to kind of get these to blend together here. So we kind of get that nice and uh, cool kind of color combination to it. So you just go through here, you work it a little bit. You also build up some volume. But now it Hopefully it looks a little bit more nicely blended together. So now we, what we need to do now is to glue two epoxy eyes on it. And then we're kind of done. 
And I like to use these a little bit more um, visible eyes. These are the new UV eyes from fly dressing. They are, of course, in different sizes, but I'm going to go for an orange one. Um, what I like with these is that they are very, very, very highly um, UV. Most of these colors in this fly is fluorescent. So as you can see, when you hit some UV light to it, it really pops. And it, in my opinion, at least it, it attracts fish a lot, you know. So I prefer to have some UV colors in all of my flies. So there we go. We're just going to mix some epoxy. And this is just a five minute epoxy and just some bigger tubes. And we're just going to put a small click as possible. These guys. A good trick with epoxy if it gets kind of very slow moving and, start and hard and hard to work with is to put them in, in boiling water or just take a tea kettle and, and, and full of, fill a pot with warm water and just have the tubes lying in that because then you're going to have a much more simple epoxy to work with. Dubbing needle or a toothpick or something like that just to mix the epoxy together. First it gets kind of murky or not so clear and then as soon as it gets clear again it's mixed together nicely. So, so we're gonna glue the eyes with epoxy and I like to have them a little bit, not all the way out where the thread is, I like to have them a little bit up here because it makes a much more natural look to the fly. So we're gonna take quite a big bunch of epoxy here, uh, almost the size not really the size of the eye, but actually a fairly big amount because it kind of shrinks down in the dubbing. So it's a little bit smaller than the eye, but slightly bigger than the pupil of the eye. So we put it on that side. And we do the same thing on the other side here. Kind of like that. And then we take the eye, we just kind of fold it into the epoxy like that. We go on the other side and we do the exactly the same thing like that. And now to get this straight, nice and really durable, so we put the clamp on here. And as you can see, they are fairly straight here. And this clamp also compresses the eyes and get the epoxy to get into the material and really make a durable head of it. So now we just have to wait five minutes and then the fly is almost done. So now five minutes has passed and the epoxy has cured a lot and uh, so this is kind of the result of the fly. Just gonna take it away from the vise here and um, we get a, a, a nice head. I like the head on these and, and looks really good. And it also moves a lot of water. And if you don't fish them with a wiggle tail, you can actually have them moving like a jerk bait. But as soon as you put the tail on them, uh, it slows the fly um, down too much in the back. So it really, you don't get that side to side movement. So it's a little bit up to you. I usually fish these guys with the XL size or the XXL size. It's a slightly min smaller pattern than I, than I normally fish. So that's it. Great fly, simple to tie and simple to cast. <laughs> <laughs>